it's come to my attention that um, a lot of people want to adopt bearded dragons because of my videos and that's great I think you should absolutely bring a beardy into your home because they are great pets I'm gonna put her right here Okay. With that being said, I do want to try to educate you guys on everything that you need before you bring one of these bad boys into your home because there is... There's quite, <laughs> quite a few things that you need to bring in before you even bring your bearded dragon home and it's not cheap. <laughs> it's not cheap. Anyway, so I don't sit here and babble away, I will just get into it. <laughs> Do you want to sit in your hammock? I'm going to put her in her hammock because it's like the first sunny day in like forever. Let me show you what she's doing at the moment. <laughs> so that's where she'll be. <laughs> Alright, let's get into it. First, you need a 4x2x2 by two by two enclosure that is 4 feet by 2 feet by 2 feet. A lot of people think that they need a smaller enclosure to start off with their baby beardy. Don't make that mistake that I did. I made that mistake. Just get the four by two by two. Just do it. Just start off with that. It'll save you a lot of money in the long run. Uh, don't make my mistakes. <laughs> the enclosure that I have was around $300, $330. Next up, super important. Listen, li I don't know what I'm doing here, but listen. <laughs> the best possible brand for UVB lights is Arcadia or Reptisun. Don't get UVB from anywhere else. Don't do it. And you also want the tube. You want the tube. You don't want the bulb. Stay away from the UVB bulbs. You're going to want a T5 Arcadia 12% UVB. That's what I have and it's fantastic. It gives my girl the amount of UVB that she needs. For the fixture and the bulb together, that's gonna be around $100. I know that's expensive, but it is crucial for their life. It is crucial. You're gonna want a heat dome. That's I will show you my entire setup once I'm done explaining so things will make more sense to you guys, but you're gonna want a heat dome. Um, that's around $30 and obviously heat bulbs. Highly recommend getting a two pack. Just good to have it, a spare with you. You're gonna want a spare UVB bulb as well. Just good to have, you know what I mean? Um, in case, in case of emergencies, you know? I don't know if I said it cause I am not good at staying organized or staying on task, but the heat dome is around $30 and the light bulbs, why did I say it like, uh, the pack of two heat bulbs is going to be around $20. I have a 150 watt dome and bulb. I also have a dimmer that goes along with that. So if it gets too hot, I can always turn it down a little bit. You can also go with the 100 watt bulb. That's good too. I just went the 150 route. <laughs> yeah, but as I was saying, I do have a dimmer for that. So it's, you know good thing to have always have a dimmer on there in case you know it does get a little too hot you can always turn it down or turn it up based on their needs and you want to keep their temperature around 105 degrees but i'm getting way ahead of myself <laughs> i also have a timer for the lights i keep her lights on for 12 hours and then i have them off for 12 hours just to mimic an actual day that they would go through in the wild you're gonna want a temp reader this is obviously to make sure that their temperatures are where they're supposed to be the temperatures are so important and those little like digital ones that you can like stick on the sides aren't usually accurate or as accurate as they could be so have a temp reader very important to have you're gonna need a bowl to put their salads in and you're gonna want an escape proof bug bowl trust me you don't want a bowl that the bugs can get out of <laughs> learn that one the hard way too so just spend the extra couple dollars on the escape proof bowl trust me game changer um the bowl for the salads i'm just gonna say five dollars and the escape proof one is seven dollars just pay the extra two bucks man just trust me you're gonna want a basking slate i got mine from etsy i got it custom made with her name on it and everything it's all oh, it's so cute obviously i will show you guys in a bit but you're gonna want a basking slate mine was around 20 bucks because i got it customized but you can find some that are ten dollars fifteen dollars your choice <laughs> personally uh getting them customized is very fun and cute and you get to support them small businesses on etsy so okay and this is something that i wish somebody told me in advance too so look outside look in your backyard for sticks for rocks for things that they can climb on it is free obviously you need to properly you know disinfect those things uh, I'm not gonna get into that because that's a whole other video if you find things outside that you can put in their tank make sure you disinfect it properly you can look that up on Google the proper way to do that so it's safe for your bearded dragon but 
that way it's free <laughs> right who doesn't love free i will show you all the things that i found outside that she loves and it's fantastic so zero dollars obviously you can find things on amazon that's you know like driftwood and stuff like that i don't have that i just looked in the good old outdoors <laughs> And it works. It works. You can either go the substrate route or the mat route. I have a mat with a dig box. There's no real reason why I don't do substrate. It's just, you know, my preference. But I do have a large dig box for her. So if she wants, she can go dig in her little sandbox in the corner. She can do her thing. But the substrate is going to cost you around $30 to $50. And then the mats are 15 <laughs> And then when I show you, you're going to be like, wow, that's amazing. I need one. Um, they're $250. <laughs> so before I even I have a custom hide for her it is like perfect it is the most beautiful thing ever she loves it she uses it every day to bask on $250 though I had it custom made and it's it's large it's large <laughs> the most amazing thing in her enclosure in my opinion it is so pretty i can't wait to show you guys that is everything you need for their enclosure setup everything you need that is things you cannot get around that you need it now we're gonna get into the nutrition side you are going to need calcium without d3 that's around ten dollars you're gonna need calcium with d3 that's around five dollars you need a vitamin powder supplement that's around eight dollars highly recommend you don't need this but i highly recommend it it's a calcium bug shaker you just put the bugs in there and you shake it around the calcium mm, so good <laughs> that's around fifteen dollars and then you're gonna need bugs i spend around forty dollars a month on bugs so i use dubia.com i love dubia.com they come so fast. They're always alive. It's perfect. Um, I get dubia roaches, mealworms. I can never say this for some reason. Black soldier fly larva. And I do wax worms, but be careful with wax worms because they're very fatty. So I just feed them as a treat occasionally. That's everything you're gonna need for nutrition. Those are things you need. <laughs> you can't, you can't. What am I looking for? Bob and weave around those things. No, you, you need them. You always want to be dusting those bugs in calcium. Bearded dragons can't make their own calcium. So it's very, very, very important that you are supplying that to them. I use the D3 calcium twice a week and I use the vitamin powder once a week. You never want to overdo it with the vitamins. Very, very, very important. Make sure you're only doing that once or twice a week, but using calcium without the vitamin vitamins <laughs> english is hard today use the calcium without the vitamins every single day you can also have a water bowl in there a lot of people think you can't have a water bowl in there because it evaporates and it makes it very humid in there that's not true you can absolutely have a water bowl in there i personally don't because in nature the way that they drink water is they they catch the drops like off of a leaf or a stick that and it lands on their nose and they drink it that way so what i do is i take a spray bottle and i just drip it on her nose and she drinks it that way i do that for her every single day and no problems there i just every single time i've put a water bowl in there she poops in it and it's like i don't want you drinking water with feces in it it's not i don't want you to do that i also spray down her greens so she can get hydration through her greens but you know you can that's your choice everyone has their own preferences when it comes to caring for their bearded dragon there's just some things that you can't get around water bowl is one of those things this is one of those things that it's like there's people who have had bearded dragons for 30 plus years have just always owned them and they follow a certain way that they feed their dragons feeding them until you know they don't want any bugs anymore but that's based on new research that's not what we're supposed to be doing <laughs> so here is the schedule that i follow you know there's going to be people who have a lot to say about it this is what i follow based on the new research we just don't want an obese dragon we don't want an obese dragon and also females in the wild they do not they do not lay infertile eggs in the wild. But if you have a female bearded dragon in captivity and you're feeding them way too much protein, they can lay infertile eggs and that is not good for them. It's just, you don't, it doesn't happen in the wild. Be mindful of that. That's why I followed that um, eating schedule. And the last little thing that I did want to mention is that I keep her um, basking area around 105 degrees. You want to keep their basking area from 104 to 107 degrees. I go right in the middle with 105. Anyways, let me go show you her enclosure and everything that I just talked about. So here is her enclosure. She's freaking out because she just pooped and I just cleaned it out and I don't think she knows that I cleaned it out yet. Whew, girl, that poop was rancid. Anyways, this is that hide I was telling you guys about. I got it custom made and I 
am obsessed obsessed and these rocks here i did find outside she loves climbing on her rocks and then those sticks i found outside and then in the corner over there is her dig box that she has been digging in as you can see <laughs> and this is that basking slate that i also got custom made because i'm a little extra <laughs> here's your heat dome here is that arcadia t5 uvb and then this doesn't produce any heat. It's just an LED bulb. It just lightens up her enclosure because, you know, naturally they live in the desert. Doll enclosures are out. We don't want a doll enclosure. And then in the corner over there, I have that camera so I can spy on her. <laughs> but this is her enclosure and everything that I just talked to you guys about. I can obviously touch on other things that have to do with bearded dragons in another video, but this was just basically everything that you need before you even bring a bearded dragon home. A good little beginner's guide and I hope it helped. <laughs> If you guys want me to talk on another topic about bearded dragons, let me know. I can do that. Let me know in the comments. Also, something that's a little crazy is that 85% of you who watch my videos aren't subscribed. 85% of you? Crazy. Anyways, <laughs> if you guys like this video, make sure you like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. <laughs>